early on, it was drilled into me that the verb comprise means include. So when I step back, I'll think, oh right, comprise means include. It's the essay comprises three sections. But whoever drilled that into me did not actually give me the whole story. Let me give you the whole story here. The verb comprise historically did mean include or comprehend, so the whole comprises the parts. But by the 18th century, the verb had also come to mean compose. In that way, the parts could comprise the whole. If you look in the American Heritage Dictionary, you'll see a usage note. And in the usage note, it says that in the 1996 survey, the usage panel for the most part accepted the use of comprise to mean compose. Only 35% of the panel rejected that usage. This is in contrast to the survey that was done in the 1960s where over half of the panel did not like comprise to mean compose. Now, if you're sitting here thinking, who is this usage panel who's changing its mind? That is a very good question. If you look in the preface of the American Heritage Dictionary, you can find the list of names of the about 200 people who are on the usage panel. It includes scholars and creative writers, journalists, diplomats, there's a Supreme Court justice on the usage panel, and several linguists, including me. I was asked to join in 2005. Some people on the panel are going to be more conservative, some people are going to be more liberal. So when you go into the dictionary and see the judgment of the usage panel, it's not that this is about what's right and what's wrong. It's more about how something may be received. The usage panel is helpful because it gives you more information as a writer or speaker to decide in any given context, how do I want to use a word? In this case, do I want to use comprise to mean include, to mean compose, or both?